there is a time to bid goodbye to the old and the ordinary and to awaken the beauty within that time is now it is time to wake up and take charge of life awaken to a new way of thinking awakening with brahma kumaris namaskar welcome to awakening with brahma kumaris we have our sister shivani with us welcome sister om shanti sister we are talking about uh, soul connections and in the last episode we were speaking about children parents and uh, how they criticize a child how they deal with a child and the relationship of a child and a parent should be of soul to soul as soul connections and the parent should not see a child as a child not the body but a soul and there should be such a strong relationship that a child should not be i mean he should be very very free to come and tell everything at every age to the parents and that happens as you said if i always feel or understand he or she my child must be right and whatever he did at that moment was right but is it practical is it possible people do so many mistakes tomorrow my children do mistake and i say okay that time he or she must have thought that it was right okay you were right at that time is it possible for me let's the child is doing something not done something but is already in the process let's say is into any kind of practice in school college any kind of a relationship any kind of an addiction which we know that what it, what the addiction is or what the relationship is may not be right hmm. but we just have to understand that time that the child wanting to do that whether it is because the child is going through some low phase Hmm. is in some kind of a pain that's why has taken to that addiction is some vacuum some kind of rejection that's why is looking for appreciation outside there is some reason why the child is going towards what he's going and that's why at that time i have to understand that the child is not doing anything wrong because of what is going on inside him this is right for him according to him not according to me Hmm. It's not right according to the parent. Yeah, I understand so that that not, child must have done at that time whatever no, he. Even now, even now, if the child is doing something, and I have to help him to come out of it. So he must be thinking he's right. No? Yeah, he's thinking he's right, and now if I want to help him to come out of it, there has to be a energy of respect. We have to be communicating. We have to be talking to each other here. there are times when the parents feel the child is wrong the child feels the parent is wrong and then they sit come let's sit and talk about it hmm but internally both of them have decided hmm actually they fight it is wrong yeah and then we say let's talk about it no they let's fight so then that's the right word after about 10 15 minutes conversation the parent will say i understand what you're saying but you are wrong so it won't create the right energy what is happening today is children are getting rejection from parents hmm you are wrong whatever you're doing is wrong everything wherever you're going is wrong and there there is another set of people whom we call friends they the say your parents are wrong no the peer group accepts you that you are right hmm the child is right every individual needs acceptance so let's say i am the child hmm and you're the parent hmm and for whatever i'm doing right now I'm getting rejection from you. But here there is a friend from whom I'm getting a lot of acceptance. And I need acceptance. Mm. So I'm going to start drifting that side towards my friends whom we call peer group. Now rejection from here continues. Mm. And here there is acceptance because friends feel that everything that we're doing is right. Now the first time the friend said bunk and let's go for a movie and i went hmm. second time the friend said try a cigarette and i tried things kept happening now the friends might start asking me 
to do something more. Bring money from home. Whatever, many ways. There are a lot of things happening today. And now I, the child, actually don't want to do it. Hmm. I don't want to do it. This is not according to my principles. Now he's stuck. But I'm already getting rejection from here. Parents. If I don't do hmm. what they say. They will reject me too. They will reject me too. And then I'm alone. And I can't be alone. And that's why just to continue getting their acceptance and appreciation a lot of children today are do doing things what they don't they want to do don't want to do right which they don't want to do and then they're going through a lot of guilt and they cannot tell anybody they cannot tell anyone but they're continuing doing it only because they want don't want to lose these people here or this one person here who's accepting them because acceptance is very conditional today. Yeah, if you continue the, doing what I tell you to do, then there's acceptance. But those uh, that group, the peer group, that uh, the, those friends are very, quite smart these days. They say, okay, if you don't do this to us, you are out of the group. We, we do not, we reject you, you're out. Yes, in schools, if you talk to school children today, to be a part of this group, I have to do this, this, this. I have to dress up like this. I have to go out with these people if I have to be a part of this group. Yeah. I have to drink this. Yes. Only why? Because I need acceptance. Why? Because I didn't get acceptance here. If a p child can get unconditional acceptance from a parent, then there is no such thing as peer pressure. Even if the whole world is on one side and they want you to do something, you will not do it, provided you have this acceptance and strength here. So if we are the ones because of whom our children are going and making mistakes under the canopy of peer pressure. Peer pressure is at every age, sister. That's another thing. There are a lot of parents today who would say, oh, my child under the influence of peer pressure wants to do this, wants to buy this, wants to wear this. If Instead of checking the child, let the parent just check themselves. Are we victims of peer pressure? We are all. We all. Can you believe it? At uh, maybe even at the age of 50, 60, when a person stops drinking, all his uh, friends in the bar, they start rejecting him. I mean, there's something wrong with you. You're not drinking. What's your problem? One day, two days, three days, then they stop talking to him and they say, you're out of the group. And if you, do, how long will you not drink here? 10 days, doctor said, 15 days. Why aren't you drinking? We are all going to die. Let's drink and die. So many things and they force, I, and then he has two choices. Either to join and drink again or leave the group. Right. But you'll be able to leave the group if, if there is a support system here. How many times in life are we taking our decisions based on one thought what will people say? Lo kya kahenge? It's such a common sentence. It is very, very important for a normal human being. What will people say? Yes. Today, parents are making decisions for their children regarding their careers, regarding their marriages, regarding big decisions in their life based on this one sentence what will people say yes they wear clothes they wear they go to a restaurant to eat they go in a special car wear shoes and so many different ki kinds of whatever you call the name of those designers things because what will people say what will people say now we have to understand if what will people say is such an important thing for me the parent so isn't peer pressure for the child natural? It's the same thing. Yeah. What will my friends say? So in order to help my child come out of peer pressure and to be able to stand strong, even in the face of everyone else having a different opinion, I will have to practice that in my life first. And I really need to ask myself, how much does it really matter what people think about me mm. and what people will say? On an average, each one of us would know at least 100 people. 
Okay. At least 100, mm. 20 very close people, right? Mm. If I am going to take my decisions based on what 100 people are going to say, do you think I can ever take any one decision which all 100 people will feel is right? Never. And even if they feel it's right, is it necessary what they feel is right will be right for me? No. How does it matter then what they think? I've never analyzed like that, but uh, this is what, what how the world uh, moves. Because Only because of one reason. Because when I was a child, my parents taught me that my self-esteem is based on people's acceptance. And therefore, even today, when I am taking a decision in my life, I'm more concerned whether people will accept my decision rather than whether that decision is right for me. You mean to say people's acceptance by my performance? Anything, my decisions, even if I'm doing something no, else. when I was a child. Yeah. yeah. How, how did that come, that line? Every step, no? Every step it was that whatever I was doing, am I getting my parents' acceptance or no? If I'm getting my parents' acceptance, then they are happy, I am happy. Mm. And so I made a belief system that my happiness mm is going to be dependent on people's acceptance. So you mean to say the parents, if they do not have unconditional acceptance, yes. then the, this child is going to grow like this yes. and will have kind of a pressure right. and will live only Always. with this problem that what will people say. Right. Always, at every step, we are taking our decisions based on what will people say because we are there in the process more of pleasing other people because if they will be pleased, mm. then they will be happy. And if they will be happy, then I will be happy, is the mantra I learned when I was a child. And then I don't have the courage to stand on my principles. Don't have the courage to take decisions mm. which are right for me. I really wish that uh, I had met uh, you when my kids were small and we had done this kind of an, uh, these things. And but you can still do that with them. Yes, I'm just going to think how to do it at this age when the children are grown up. It's not about the age. Even if the patterns are deep, mm. even if they have been there for a very, very long time, mm. it's one thought away to break the cycle. And what is that thought away? Now if I understand mm. that my decisions are my responsibility for my happiness and for my children. You know, we get so many emails today where two common problems which children are facing is their decisions about their career and their decisions about their marriage partner. Hmm. And in both the cases, the parents are just not agreeing to the choice of the child only because what will society say? There has been in the recent last couple of months, there have been a large number of incidents where in the name of honor killing, hmm. parents have gone to the extent of having their children murdered because what will society say mm. when the child has married against the norms of that particular village or that social circle? How far can we go? Just because what will society say? A parent can go to the extent of getting a child yeah, murdered. But so society will say something or the other every time. Exactly. Whatever you do, exactly. good, bad, or whatever you do, they'll say something. Exactly. Because out of the hundred people, they will always pick up the worst point in you. It's not only that, they have an opinion. Yeah, but usually their opinion is negative. Not necessary. Their usually opinion, I say. No, their opinion is not negative. Their opinion is just different. It's like if you're wearing a white shirt mm. and I can come up and say, do you know what, white doesn't look very nice on you, probably you should try grey. And someone else will come and say, no, I think blue would look better. And the third will come and say, black would look really nice. And the fourth will come and say, white was looking really nice on you. They I'll are not wear negative. white with a lot, lot of straps <laughs> on that, blue, black, all, all That's one exactly. One. And in the process, I've forgotten which color do I like, what is right for me. What was my choice? Where is my happiness? Because I'm taking my decisions based on what other people will say. Other people are not negative. Mm. They're only different. And they are entitled, they are allowed to be different because we have different thought processes. But I will have to take the decision only based on what is good for me and my family.
what I was saying is, you're so right that, you see, if you're strong enough within, then what people say doesn't matter. I should be able to stand on my principles if I feel they're right, even if I have to stand alone. And even when, supposing later on, I realize that it was wrong? Never mind. It was my decision. This is where it is. When parents are helping children hmm. to take decisions in life, they're big decisions. Helping or forcing? That's the question. We think that we know what's best for the child. Hmm. So we will take the decision for them. Hmm. And then the decision is taken and imposed on the child, whether the child is willing or no. But it would be so beautiful if first the parents allow the child to take the decision mm. and if they are not comfortable with the decision that the child is taking, they continue having a conversation till the child mm. agrees to what they want. So that the decision is not the parent's decision, but the child has to feel that it was his decision. Yes, you're right. We have children who get admission in IITs and IMs or any other professions where they didn't want to go there, but they're there today. And you know something, they just are not able to study. They just don't do well. In spite mm. of getting in the top colleges of the country, they're not able to study. They, it just doesn't happen. They don't do it deliberately. It just doesn't happen. They're not able to study. And then when they are asked to take treatment, and psychiatrists tell us it's because the mind has not yet accepted the decision. That decision of in, taken so many years yeah. back? So many years back, the child may not ever perform well even in their career, even in their profession, because the mind says, this was not my decision. Wow. This was not my decision. Oof. So the right, and if there's a blockage, no? But this is so, so powerful. Yes. It stays so long? It can stay for a very long time because the block is created. So unless you clear the block, the block is going to be there with you for oh, a very long time. That's why so many women I you know, meet, they say, well, I always wanted to be an actress. I couldn't do it because so much of pressure. She has not still forgotten. Yeah. She would still dress that way, think and talk all the time. She's married, children, old. But she did, so many have told me, yeah. I always wanted to be an actress. I always wanted to be on screen, yeah. but my parents never allowed me. This, this can stay for a very, very long time and mm. probably for a lifetime and carry forward to the next birth, the blockage. And I hope they become actors then. It's not about that, you know, the mind will forget what the blockage was about. The mind will only remember, I did not get to do this. what I wanted to do. Okay, but what is not? Might not be. Mayor it's an mayor. emotional blockage that will happen. I did not get to do what I wanted to do. So? Somebody then, else's decision was imposed on me. This blocks my creativity. Poor me. Yeah. So this becomes a victim feeling. So even if we are guiding our children in the most important decisions in their life, keep on guiding till the decision becomes theirs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go on talking and talking and discussing and taking advice from everyone, sharing brainstorming, do everything till the child feels mm. and is convinced that it is my decision. If the child gets into doing something thinking that it is the parent's decision, one, it will be a blockage and second, like you said, if the decision is not right, there are going to be consequences of our decisions. But if it's my decision, I'm ready to face the consequences. My choice. Yeah. But if it was somebody else's decision, then the smallest obstacle, and I say, I don't want to do it. I anyways don't want to do this. This happens even in marriages. Hmm. The child, smallest obstacle in the new relationship. I never wanted to marry. I was not interested. I don't want to do this. This is just arranged first. Yeah. So it has to be the child's decision. This is a very big role. Parents feel that, you know, the child is their property. And whatever, and it's a very pure intention. The intention of the parent is very pure. I don't want to make my, I don't want Not my child to. Not necessary, sister. Not necessary, uh, very pure intention. It can be the, the parent's ego. Otherwise, that honor killing won't be there. Yeah, but even So many times, when, you, yeah. my child not listening to me, yeah. I decide for you. That's not a pure intention. But you know, I decide for you because I know what's good for you. No, not necessary. That's what the parent feels. 
It can be the peer pressure the on the parent also. But he can be a victim also. Even under peer pressure, the parent feels that this whole society feels yeah. that this is good for the child, so this is good for the child. I know what is good for that the child. Is, we live in the society, we have yeah. to so be... So I have a logic for it. The parent has a good amount of logic for it. But the intention is always this, I know what's good for the child. And then the decision will be imposed. But do I know what is good for me yeah. or myself? That's important. And then the relationship between the two souls, this gets affected. So the parents will have to now open up to the process of moving from ownership mm. of a child to being a guide and a facilitator. Spirituality teaches us a very beautiful thing. I don't own the child. Mm. I'm on my journey mm. and this soul is on his journey. And both of us have come together into this role of a parent and a child. So my role is to facilitate this soul on its journey. The soul might make mistakes. And even if he makes mistakes, I should be there to support. That's my role because a parent is a facilitator and a guide, not an owner. That's his job of the parent. A facilitator and a guide. Mm. Not, not owns the property. It's not. We don't own anything. A soul doesn't own anything. I like that line of yours when you say, keep on brainstorming, keep on discussing, keep on talking, take a uh, uh, other people's uh, guidance, maybe a guru, friends, everybody, till the child makes that as his own decision. Yeah. But this requires patience, this requires understanding, and this requires respect for the soul. What parents try to do today is, they think that they know the best for the child, which is true. They do yeah. know what is the best for the child, but they know the best from their perspective. Mm. It's from their perspective, the best for their child may not necessarily always be mm. the best for the child. And finally, it's the child who has to go on that journey, not I, the parent who has to go on that journey. So even if I choose the best path for the child, it's like if you choose this path for me to walk from here to there, it's a beautiful path and you've chosen the best path possible. But finally, I have to walk. And my walking will only depend on my strength. And if I'm not strong enough, I can fall down after 100 meters. Maybe you cannot cross that long line. I will not be able to do it because I was not empowered. So let's respect our children. They might make mistakes. No one has had a perfect journey. There have been obstacles, but if empowered, they will cross every obstacle. And if disempowered, no obstacle also will become an obstacle because I don't have the strength. Mm. So it's not important to find the best path because I can never find the best path. But yes, it's important to create a strong child who will walk his own path. So let's empower our children, make them strong to create their journey. Be there on the journey. If they're about to fall, we're there to hold their hand. And when they fall, Instead of holding their hand, if we stand there and say, I told you, not to I do so. told you not to do this, we are again disempowering them. This can be a very damaging sentence for anyone. I told you, no? I told you the other option was better for you. They're there. They've gone into guilt, shame, and again pain. We have to remember our role always for the child, empowerment, 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 with love and support. They will make mistakes, we all make mistakes. And when we make a mistake, all that we need is support, not advice. And love. That's there in the support, not advice, and definitely not criticism that I told you, you will make a mistake. I told you, you will not be able to do this. Our respect for them has to be constant. If for any soul, respect for any soul, even if they make a mistake, let's continue giving that respect. Because if we withdraw respect mm. when somebody makes a mistake, then we're only empowering their guilt and shame. Let's not do that to anyone. It can be very, very damaging for them. And if we have done that already, in the next episode, I want you to tell me how 
to rectify. Okay. Sure. Because at that time you never told this all, all this to us. There were no episodes of uh, Brahma Kumaris that time when my children were small. So I need to ask you further questions. Now what do I do if I haven't done what you had, what you've just told us to do? Let's meditate. Let's meditate. Let's sit back comfortably and explore our field of relationships. Love, support, acceptance. Words that were used, but rarely expressed and experienced. Let me today take these words into my field of relationships. People around me will make mistakes. They are on their journey. They have taken decisions and the consequences of the decisions have to be faced. My role is to support, guide and empower. I'm on a journey with them, a journey of unconditional acceptance and love. My role is to be a facilitator and a guide as they walk their path. My responsibility to strengthen the soul on the journey not decide the path for them. I'm there to share, not to dictate. I'm there to love and to support unconditionally. Om Shanti.